Hello everyone and welcome to this video which I am super excited about as we are going to learn how to build an Airbnb clone complete with a content management system. For this video we're going to be building it with Next.js. We are going to be using Next.js in order to help us build server side rendering and static web applications with React and we are also going to be using Sanity. And Sanity is the content management system that I was talking about. Sanity is pretty cool as it's used by all the major players such as Nike or Nike, however you want to say it, National Geographic, what else? Connas, Sonos, Figma, Netlify, and literally so, so many more. It's crazy. And just quickly, for those of you who perhaps have not used a content management system before, well, you are in for a treat. Okay, so quickly, what do we need to build this Airbnb clone? Well, in this Airbnb clone, I want to have like a main page in which it's going to display all my properties as well as provide you with a map. So we are actually going to be using Google Map API for this as well. I'm going to show you how to do that in order to show multiple properties on the dashboard. And then, of course, if we click into each property, it's going to display a lot more information about that particular property. So this is going to be fun. We're going to be building a lot of schemas. We're going to be doing that in Sanity.io. It's going to be painless, I promise. Like this is the easiest content management system I think I've ever used. So you're in safe hands. This is what the final project will look like. So there is a lot to learn. I'm not going to lie. This is going to be a long tutorial, but by no means is it going to be hard because I'm going to take you through everything step by step the whole way through. And of course, explain concepts and things that perhaps you might not have seen before throughout. I mean, I am really excited. It's going to be so much fun. So please come and code along with me. By the end, you will have your own Airbnb clone. Also, of course, using a content management system. And once you have that knowledge, you can apply the knowledge that we learn here today to build any app that you want. Okay. So I hope you're excited. I obviously am. Please, of course, I have to ask, please do like and subscribe to my channel if you do like my content, as it really does allow me to keep creating more content for you guys. Okay, so what are we waiting for? Let's do it. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to start off with making our content management system with Sanity. Now, we are doing this because we're going to start off by building our backend first. So the backend of our Airbnb app, which is going to involve us making schemas and types in order to view what our database relationships are going to look like thanks to Sanity.io, which is going to show them for us visually in a beautiful UI. So it's really user friendly. I'm going to show you, show you how to do that in part one. And then in part two, we're going to use that data and everything we built on the back end in order to build out our front end. Okay, so let's do it. Here we are on Sanity.io. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is obviously sign up. So I'm just going to use my email to do that. And there we go. Now this is free to use up to a certain point. It's perfect for projects like this. And they do have a lot of template projects that you can use to get started. But as you are following me and my tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do it from scratch. Okay. So let's go ahead and click here. Now, this will take us to the Sanity documentation, including getting started with Sanity CLI. Now, the first thing we want to do uh, is actually install the command line interface or CLI or CLI as I like to call it. And we can do that by simply going to our terminal and then anywhere as we're going to be installing this globally, I'm literally just going to copy this line. The dash G is for installing it globally on your machine. So I'm just going to paste that install globally. Dash G is globally sanity command line interface. And there we go. We have now installed it. So now if I write sanity, you will see all the commands that I have available to me. We want to initialize, so init is the command we need. We want to initialize a new Sanity 
project. So I'm just going to clear that and write sanity in it. Like so. It really is that simple. Now I just follow the prompts. So what I want to do, I want to create a new project. Yes, my project name is going to be, let's call it Air. Let's just call it Airbnb, right? Because that's what we are building. We are building an Airbnb clone. Enter. Okay. Do we want to use the default data configuration? I'm going to put yes. And we are creating a data set project output path this is gonna this is gonna be our output path i'm okay with that what do we want to do do we want to build a movie project an e-commerce platform no a blog no clean project with no predefined schemas yes so that is what we are doing of course if you wanted to build a movie app or a blog then they do have those templates for you i do suggest that you click those in your spare time but not now because we are building an airbnb project Okay, so this is going to take a while because it's actually doing a lot for us. It's configuring everything. It's getting the right file set up. It's literally doing all the heavy lifting for us, sort of similarly to when you use Create React app and it gets all the configuration and file set up for you there too. So it's very, it's very similar. I'm just going to speed this up for us. So and done. Okay, so we have done that. Now what? It's very, I like the prompts that it gives us. Um, well, we can do a few things. We can run Scientist Start to run our studio, but I'm just going to open up the code first. So I'm going to do that with a shortcut code dot as I am using VS Code. Uh, I need to actually make sure I am in the project first. So CD, uh, B and B, don't forget to be in the project. And code dot. Okay, so here we have everything that the command sanity in it has created for us, essentially. It has provided us with a package JSON file, which has all the dependencies that we are going to need for this project, as well as some scripts that we are going to use. We also have uh, a schemas folder with some boilerplate essentially for uh, where we're going to put our created document types. So we're going to put them in here and then a sanity JSON file. OK, which we're going to go into a little bit later. OK, but essentially this is all important information for us that we're going to need. So thank you, sanity, for whipping this up for us. OK, now if I go back to my terminal, I'm just going to clear these and run sanity start like that and just wait a little bit. Well, we're going to essentially start our sanity studio. So once again, it's just doing its thing. I'm going to speed this up for us. OK, so content studio successfully compiled. I am literally just going to take this URL, go to my browser and just put it in. And I'm just going to log in again using the same credentials as last time. And there we go. Here we have our Sanity Studio. Um, we can see it's our Sanity Studio. We've named this Airbnb and we can see that on our left. We don't have, um, our schema does not contain any document types yet. If those, if it did, then those types will be listed here. We're going to be adding that throughout the project. So this is essentially what we're going to be doing by the end of this section. We are going to have essentially something that looks like uh, this. Okay, so let's get going. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is actually go into here. OK, so now let's have a look at our schema JS file. So if you open this up, this file in the schemas folder, the schema defines our content models. OK, so we're going to start modeling out our content logically. Um, let's not really worry about how it's going to be presented. We just need to think about how everything's going to essentially work together and what kind of relationships it's going to have. 
So I know that I want to have a property, right? And that property is going to have a geolocation because we're going to be using Google Maps because that's what um, Airbnb has. It has a map uh, displaying where the property is exactly by longitude and latitude. We want to give the property a title. So for example, my lovely London flat, uh, a price per night, how many beds it has. And then of course the host, which is going to be a person which can always is also shared by a traveler because both the host and the traveler are a person. So we can use that to our advantage to make our repo just look a little bit neater. And then we also want to have reviews that are linked to a traveler. Okay, so that's one relationship that we're going to have to have. And of course, we want images of the property itself. So in a nutshell, that is what I want and that's what we're going to build. So let's get to it, starting with the property. So I'm going to create a document type called property with one string field called name. Uh, and then we are also going to have a title and a type. OK, so the title is that's going to be the display name for the type uh, the name is going to be I the identifier for the document type and the type itself um, but we can go into that a little bit later on that's just all you need to know so let's get to it so in my schemas folder i'm just going to make a new file and call it property js and in here, I'm going to do export default, default, if I can spell that correctly. And now, as we said, I need a name, name is a string. I need a title also as a string and I need a type. As I said, those are the three things that I need. And then this is going to be a document type. Okay. So the property is going to be a document type. And then everything that we discussed is going to be a field. So field like so. And I'm going to have an array of fields. Okay. So maybe actually let's put that as fields. That probably makes more sense. Okay. So the first thing that we discussed is actually giving our property a title, right? So once again, I am just going to... I'm essentially just going to copy this because that's what we are going to be doing. This is not going to be a document type this time. So this field, well, I'm going to name this field title. And I'm actually going to give the title. It's going to be title as well, uh, not to be confusing, but it, this is going to be the properties title that I discussed. And the type of this is going to be a string because that's all I want to be. I want it to be a string. So, okay, let's just see, let's just see how this works for now, okay? I'm just going to save this and then go into the schema. And now all I'm going to do is import the object and document schema, okay? So right down here, we import object and document schema schema and our property is a document type type document uh, not that that's important for now I just want to reiterate that and I'm going to import property from well it's in the same folder so it's just going to be property like so so I've imported the property and now in here I am going to put my document type of property in here. And I'm simply going to do it like so, because our boilerplate here is going to concatenate it with anything else that we put in here. So now if I click save and then go to here, well, isn't that handy? It's saying we're missing the type name. So let's go back here. We know that this is a property. And let's just give it the title of property with a capital P. So now if I go here and refresh, 
Ta-da! We have made our first document. Type document, we've made a property with the type of document. But it doesn't really have anything here at the moment because we haven't actually added one. If I wanted to add one to our uh, content management system now, I would just click here and it says, oh, create new property because we have named it a property. And ta-da, I can now add a property and the only field it is requesting is a title. So I can now put a lovely London flat and publish. And there we go. We have our first property. All we really needed from it is a title. So that's all that we have done. We filled it out and we published it. And now we have our first property. It's a London flat. If we want to add a new one, well, we can do just that. I just simply have to click here and add something else and it will get added here. Amazing. But of course, this is really basic. We really want to build out this property with everything that we've said. So I'm just going to leave this for now and carry on. So the next thing I actually want to do, so we have our title. Let's actually also give it perhaps a location. So this time I'm going to make this location, title, location. And this is going to be a uh, geo point this time. Geo point. Um, we'll go into this type later. For now, I'm just going to finish typing out everything we need for this file. So once again, perhaps I should just make a few of these. Uh, this time, let's delete that and delete this. This time I'm going to actually have a property type because you know how on um, Airbnb it asks, you know, would you rather have a bungalow or a, just a one room or the whole house or something? So that's what property type is going to cover for us property type and I'm actually going to make it like a radio selection where you can just pick one so the type for this um, it's not going to have a type this time I'm actually just going to say options and uh, be very strict about what we can choose for this uh, so I'm going to have a list like this and then the list is going to be an array and that array is going to have a title. So once again, with a title, I'm just going to put house and then value. So there's our first one. We've got a house. And then what else can we have? Well, I guess we can have a flat. So that's going to go on our radio button. Flat. Uh, what else? A, I don't know, a bed and breakfast and then let's put the value here as bed and breakfast and then let's just have maybe one one more sure why not I'm gonna have a boutique hotel because that's quite fun boutique hotel and this is gonna say boutique hotel Okay, so that's four. I think that's fine. I'm happy with that. And let's just say it's, I want it to be radio, right? So I need to say layout radio. Um, let's just see if that's working without giving us errors. Type is missing a type. Okay, let's go back. Ah, uh, yes, type. This is gonna be a string because the value that we choose is a string. So save that, refresh. Okay, so now you can see when we uh, wanna add a new property, we are asked for all these other things too. So the locations, latitude and longitude, altitude, these are optional, and then the property type, which is a radio um, option. Okay, a radio select. You can only pick one, okay? Let's carry on. Hopefully you can see how uh, this works. Once you get it, it is quite, it's quite easy to get the hang of. Um, I know it can seem intimidating at first, but as long as you stick to the rules, name, title, type, um, then you should be fine. 
So once again, just as I've said it, name, title, type. So next thing we want is, um, we want a main image because, you know, Airbnb has that one main image and then a few supporting images. And this is actually going to be a type image. Uh, and then I'm going to say options, hot spots, true. So we've done our main image and now I want to do the supporting images. So um, once again, I wish I should just really keep that. I might as well just keep that um, copied at all times. I'm just going to copy that for later. Um, and what should we call this? Let's just call it images, title, images, and type. Well, this is going to be more than one image. So this is type array. And in that array, this is how you do arrays. So array of, and then let's open up our array, and then type. And then I'm going to actually create a property image. So yeah, I'm going to do that. Um, so I'm just going to comment this out for now, actually, because we actually need to create this type, which I'll show you how to do. Just like we created the property type, we need to create, uh, sorry, just like we created the property type, we're going to have to create a property image type. So for now, I'm just commenting that out. And then once a whoops, once again. Okay, so now we've got the images. Next, perhaps let's do let's do price per night because then we can derive the monthly price from that if we wish. So I think price per night is a good one to have. Price per night type, and this is going to be a number, right? So we need to actually say that. Next, I want to have the beds. I want to know what the bed situation is before I decide to stay at this b, &B. and this is going to be a number as well as the, uh, let's say bedrooms, because they usually have that too. They have the beds and the bedrooms separately because, you know, that makes sense. Perhaps you have more than one a uh, bed in a bedroom because I have stayed in places like that. Sure, why not? Okay, so now that we have all that, we actually need to get a slug, which is gonna help us out if we need to go specifically to that property. So I'm gonna go into this later. I think this is something that's better off explained visually. Uh, so when we use it, you will see what I mean by a slug because I mean, it's not exactly the uh, animal. So type slug, that is an actual type. And once again, options, we're gonna have options for this and we can get the uh, source for this title and then the max length of the slug. Um, let's just put 100, okay? So we've actually like hard-coded that the max length uh, for that. And then um, I'm also going to give this an ID. So once again, ID, title, ID, and that's going to be a number. Okay, I think that's it. What else did we say? Um, Oh yeah, I mean, we need to give it a description, don't we? Because all these Airbnbs have a description. So description, description, and this is going to be a string. Okay, so I'm just gonna see what that looks like before carrying on. So we, yep, we can see here, we now have a main image, which we can upload or drop an image to. We have somewhere to put the price per night, beds, bedrooms, slug, so we can generate a slug. The slug is generated off the title, an ID and a description. Great. Now it's time for maybe the slightly more complicated stuff, even though it's not that complicated really. We're gonna have to make our own types. So as you can see here, I've been using like types that are sort of generic, I guess, string, number, 
um, slug, and so on. Uh, and we commented this out because this uses a type that I need to make, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna uncomment this out now, and this will break, uh, this will break, right? Because the type property image does not exist, I'm going to make it. So in my schema, I'm just gonna put property image JS, and let's create our first type. Okay, custom type, here we go. Even though we did already create one, we created a document type. This is to, this is slightly uh, different, I guess, because we're gonna be using it in the property type itself. Once again, export default. So this is how, this is sort of like standard, and you guessed it, name, title, type. The name of this is going to be property image, as we previously decided property image for the title and this is going to be a type of image okay because this is what we're putting into the array the array of images this is an image um once again we can give it fields if we want let's go let's do it why not we can always decide we don't want this later but it's nice to have the knowledge of how to do this uh and once again name title type um i want each image to have a caption so a caption, and this is of course a string. Um, and then you can also do something like this is highlighted true. I'll show you what that is later. And then uh, I'm just gonna put options hot spot true so you would have seen me use this hot spot uh twice now i'm just going to show you the difference of having a hot spot and not having a hot spot just give me one second let's save this and then go into the schema and i'm just going to add property image in here as well and import it so that was of course done automatically for me but make sure that you actually import the property image too if yours doesn't automatically uh show up okay now so if you go into here and go to the place where you can add images you will see i will be able to add more than one image Okay, so it's not like this up here. We can add more than one image because we made a property image type and we stuck it in an array that lives on the property itself, the property type. So now I can actually drag images in here. Let's go ahead and just use one that I have. Um, obviously, this probably, it's not a property. So <laughs> there we go. And I can actually edit stuff in here too. I can do whatever I really want. That is what the hotspot means. So you would have seen that I'm using hotspot quite a lot, hotspot true, that allows me to do all this type of stuff. So if you want that, keep the hotspot on as true. And of course, I mean, let's just, let's just save this for now. Um, so if I exit out of it, you will see that is saved. I can also delete it if I wish. So I'm gonna delete it for now because I don't want in that in my property. It's a piece of fluff. It's not really a property. So let's move on until we fully make our property. Okay. So we have made our property image type. Remember we had to put it in here so that it can be concatenated with the others. The next thing I want to do, so let's go back to our property, is actually provide a host for this. So similarly to how we made a property image type, I'm gonna have to make some custom types here too. So once again, name, I'm gonna put a host, I'm gonna put title host, and I'm going to put type host, which we are yet to make. Don't forget a comma. And then perhaps while I'm here already, I'm just going to, um, okay, let's make, uh, yeah, let's make some reviews too. So I'm going to make an array of reviews. So just move that up for us. Name, review, title, review, sorry, plural, because it's going to be an array, isn't it? Type array and then array of, so we need of, 
uh, open up our array, whoops, and then let's make a review type. Um, so yeah, type of review, which we are also yet to make just like the host type. Great. So let's make the, um, let's make the review first. I think it'll actually be easier and then we'll move on to the host. Now I'm just going to start this off again. So once again, export default. Um, I mean, this is really good for muscle memory, right? Because uh, there is a lot of repetition, but it's all important. Name, title, type. So the name of this is going to be a review, a singular review, title, review, type. Uh, this is going to be an object. So we haven't used an object type before. Um, let's put fields that will make up our review. So I'm going to have the once again, just to make our lives easier, let's have a uh, review description. Des descri description, review description. And this is going to be a string. Um, and then let's also have the person that left the review, which is going to be the traveler, which we are going to have to make. Uh, traveler. That's why I want to leave host last because traveler and host are going to have something in common. So type, we're going to make a traveler type. And then I am just going to have a rating as, whoops, rating as well. So name, rating, title, rating, and then, um, yeah, let's have options now. So options. Uh, it's going to be a list and then the list of array, an array of things. Um, I'm going to have a title of five stars. And the value is going to just have five stars like this. If I could just format everything correctly and spell five stars okay so we've got our first option I think we'll make this a uh, radio select as well so five four oops nope four three two one brilliant okay and now we have our layout it's going to be radio. Cool. So there's our review. Um, let's stick it in here too. So I'm just going to put the review and hopefully that will automatically import. No, it didn't. The other one did though. Import review from review. Let's have a look now. What's it not liking? Uh, unknown type host, unknown type traveler. Well, yes, we know that. The fields property must be an array of fields. Let's go back. I'm just going to comment this out for now. Get rid of the traveler and then get rid of the host. Okay, so hopefully that should work now. No. The fields property must be an array of fields instead so undefined on the rating. So, so that's quite handy for debugging. So on the review, type object. Ah, that should be a string, remember, because the value is going to be a string. So save that. Wait for that to rebuild. And there we go. So we can now add a review. So we can give a description, so awesome place, and a rating. Cool. Um, here we go, that's our one review. But we now need to associate a uh, traveler with it, right? So let's get to it. Let's now make a, uh, let's start with the traveler first. Traveler JS, once again, export default name traveler 
title, traveler, and type. So I'm just going to put a capital T here. Uh, and the type is actually going to be a, um, it's going to be a reference because I want the traveler and the host to share a type, which is a person. So this is how you would do so. You would write to, and then I'm just going to open up my array, um, type person. So obviously now we need to create a person, but it's all going to be worth it when you see how good it looks on our content management system. So there we go. Um, okay, so now we have created our traveler. Let's first make our person type. So once again, I'm going to go in here, make a person JS, click enter. Export default name, person, title, person, uh, type. I'm going to make this a document type. Um, and I'll show you the where this will show up if it's a document type. Uh, and then let's have some fields once again. So fields. Um, and what do we need to have for each person? Well, we need each person to have a name. So I'm just going to put a name like so, and this is going to be a string. Uh, we can also give it a description if we want something like, please use, um, you know, first name, last name format. If we want, we can do that uh, just to give like a sort of helper. We also want each person to have a slug. Title slug and type slug. Um, we don't really want a description for this. But once again, we want to have options source name and max length 100 because we don't want it to be longer than 100 when it's generated 100 characters long next we also want each person to have their own id so sort of like the properties right um oops name id title id and this is going to be the type of number. Mm -hmm. And then we also want each person to have, you know, an image so we know what they look like. So once again, image, image, and this is the type image because that exists. Great. So we have our person, we have our traveler, and now let's do our host JS. And then host, well, it's exactly the same as traveler, really, apart from uh, there is a difference. Only the travelers uh, are going to have uh, the ability to read reviews and the host is going to be attached to the property itself. OK, so now I'm actually going to uncomment out the bit that says host. Save that. Let's go to our schema and import everything we have just made. So that is the traveler, the host, and the person type. So once again, come on, the traveler, host, and the person document type. And I believe they should all have capitals. Yes, they should. Okay, so now let's go back to here. And there we go. So now the property document type and the person document type, we can add a person. So I can add Anya Kubo. I can generate a slug for myself, give myself an ID. So I'm going to be the first one, uh, add an image of myself. So let's go ahead and do that now. Upload. Mm. 
just going to use this headshot. Okay, so there we are, publish. There I am, there I am as a little person. Okay, so I've just created a person. I've not defined myself um, as a traveler or host yet, but if I go into a lovely flat, I can select myself as a host, okay? So I am now the host of this property. Great, okay. I am really excited about this. I believe we are now done building our back end. Let's actually go add some uh, properties to our database. Let's add some people, which we can then decide if they are travelers or hosts of our property. Okay, let's do it. Now, there is actually an option to be able to change what is previewed in here if you wish. Obviously, I think uh, Sanity does a good job at guessing what is the best to preview to you, but if you don't like it, you can override it. So for example, say instead of having my image and my name, I wanted to have an image and an ID. Um, so I would use preview select, and this of course is uh, using the title name. So I am literally using my name to show me my name. But if I wanted to use my ID and an image, I could change this to ID and then refresh this. And you will see uh, you are getting me by ID. So the person's ID instead of their name as an identifier. So that is one thing you can do if you wish. Um, I'm going to leave this for you here in case you want to use it. So I'm going to upload that onto GitHub. Uh, like I said, it does a pretty good job of picking the most likely one you uh, should use. But, you know, just in case you're not happy with it, that's just something you can do. OK, so I think we are now ready to actually start adding some data to our content management system. So let's create some properties. Let's create some people which we will then assign to the property as a host or a traveler. So that is going to be up to us. Let's do it. So in the property, um, I'm actually going to just delete these. So just going to get rid of them. Delete, delete a laundry flat and delete this one too. So why did I just do that? I just duplicated it by mistake. Uh, at least you know that's an option that you can do. I'm just going to delete that. And I'm going to delete this one too. As soon as it lets me. Oops, I need to select it. Delete. Okay. So yes, let's make our first property. I'm going to call it a lovely... Uh, London flat again. <laughs> Let's get the uh, longitude and latitude. So this is the latitude of my flat. This is going to be the longitude. I'm going to leave the altitude. This is going to be a flat, as we said. And now let's upload some images of the flat. So just going to upload a main image. And then I'm going to add some other properties too. So I can choose to upload or drop them in. It is up to you. I'm going to do this one. So let's add that in there. We can also edit the details if we wish, but I don't really want to. So there's one flat. There we go. Uh, let's add another one. So once again, I'm just going to add a second image. Uh, and then let's go ahead and add four. Let's make that be... Um, 
sort of like how many we want for each property. So there's our, here we go. We've got four images. We've got one main image. I think that's the same one, but I mean, it's fine for now. We can always change it if we wish. Let's say the price per, price per night for this flat is 230. I'm not going to use um, currency for this because I don't know what country you're doing it in. So I don't really want to just push wherever I am on you, 230, whatever. That's what the price is. Uh, let's say it has three beds, two bedrooms. Let's generate a slug for it. Give it an idea of zero as the first one. Give it a description. So a lovely flat situated in the heart of Battersea. Situated. I hope I spot that right. A lovely flat situated in the heart of sea. Perfect for a mini break and exploration of the city. The host, I'm going to add myself, I am the host. And then reviews, well for reviews we actually, um, let's just say it has no reviews for now this one, okay, we'll add some reviews. Let's publish this. Now let's add some more people. So I'm going to add, let's add Omar, um, Abdullah, to generate a slug for him, give him an idea of one. And so we here we have Omar Abdullah. Um, let's go ahead and publish him. Now let's go back to our property and add a review from Omar. So add a review. Um, great stay and lovely flat. Five stars for me. Great. Now, ah, why can't we select a host? That is strange. Let's go back to our review. Ah, uh, yes, we didn't uncomment this out. So now let's go back, let that rebuild. Go back in here and then we add Omar as the traveler from our person list. So great, we have a review from Omar. This is looking good. Um, okay, fantastic. Cool. So, I mean, let's just make another property while we are here. Let's have two properties to work with. I'm gonna put a spacious flat, sorry, house in Hackney. Give it a latitude, give it a longitude, say it's a house, add a main image. So once again, upload a house, and then Just add some images. For the house, I'm just gonna do four again. Don't forget we can also add a caption as we did add that to it. So I can put the pillows. The pillows you can touch. I don't know, there we go. <laughs> So we can have captions on the images too if we want and if we want to display them in the front end, that could be an option as well. Um, let's carry on adding some images. Get a picture of the bedroom, sure. And then just one more. Again, of a couch, just to show how comfy this place is. So we've got our four images now. Price per night, let's say, I don't know, 1,030, because it's a huge house, it's probably a bit cheap or whatever. Five beds, mm, four bedrooms. Generate a slug, give it an ID. 
a bit of description. So a large house situated or a large house in Hackney. Mm, Hackney, perfect for a large family or I don't know, celebrations. I hope you enjoy your stay here. Um, and let's just say, I don't know, let's say Omar's the host. It's a very small site we have at the moment. Uh, and then again, let's add a review. I have stayed here, so I'd say this place is lovely. Of course, ideally we'd have way more people in our database, but you know, I don't want you to sit here while I add um, loads of data. I think this illustrates perfectly how we can uh, add data to our um, content management system. So let's publish that. And I think we are now ready to start making our front end. So I hope you've enjoyed this section. Next, we're gonna actually uh, work on linking it up to our front end. I hope you're excited. I hope you've learned a lot in this section. And if you feel like I didn't go into something in enough detail, please let me know in the description below and I will aim to answer all your questions for you. But for now, let's carry on. Part two. Okay. So in part one, we built our back end. Essentially, we built our, our content management system. We added data, we added two properties and we added two people which are interchangeably hosts and travelers. In this part, we're gonna build out our front end. So let's do it. Now it's important to actually note that for this part, we actually need to keep the backend running as that is where we're gonna be getting our data from in order to populate our front end. So keep that running and then in a new tab, so yeah, you can do a new window if you want, but I like to keep it neat and keep, a, uh, keep it everything in one place. I've just not a new tab. Now in here, make sure you are not in the Airbnb project we have just made. Um, so I'm just gonna go into the directory that I usually work in. Uh, the Airbnb project is in there. However, I wanna make a front end for it. So I'm gonna do this with another command. That command is npx create next app. Okay, so similarly to create React app, we can use it to essentially get started with Next.js, which is what we're gonna be doing for this project to build our front end. So in our terminal, in the directory of our choice, I'm just gonna create a Next app and I'm gonna call it Airbnb front end. Or you can call it whatever you want. Uh, just make sure to know that this is where we're gonna be working on our front end. So I'm just gonna click that and wait for that to create a new Next.js app for me all configured all nicely so I can get going. Once again, I'm just gonna speed this up and edit. Now, to run our app, we already have some commands here, but I just wanna show you what this looks like. So I'm gonna open it up using code dot, which is a uh, shortcut for anyone out there using a VS Code. So there we go. I'm actually going to just minimize the back end, even though it is running, I don't actually need it up anymore. So here is what Create Next App has uh, made for us. Essentially, we've got a package JSON file with some scripts and some dependencies, as well as uh, just some basic boilerplate. If we actually run this, so npm, what were the commands again? npm run dev. And then go to localhost 3000. You will see this is the boilerplate of our next JS project. I just wanna delete all of this now so we can start from scratch. So I'm just gonna go into the pages, go into the index.js file, 
And then all of this stuff that it's returning, I'm just gonna get rid of it like so, and then just return nothing, essentially. Um, now we can call this home, we can call it whatever we want, import styles. Uh, I actually don't want to import any of this. So now if we look at this, we have a blank canvas to start with. This is looking good. I'm just gonna make that bigger for us so we can read everything that is happening. Um, keep that at 100% though. Okay, great. So for example, if I was to now write, hello, you will see that pop up in there. Cool. Okay, so before we get going, let's actually check that we can actually get the data in our front end, right? So I'm just gonna delete this. And I'm actually going to create a client. Okay, so I'm gonna create a client. I'm gonna call it Sanity Client. Let's do it. In the root of my project, I'm actually just gonna create a Sanity JS file. And I'm going to paste just some code that I wanna share with you. Um, I don't really feel the need to type this all out because there is a lot of annotation and help there for you as a developer when you are doing this by yourself. So this is the code that you will need. Of course, you will have my GitHub, so please go ahead and take it. This is essentially um, what we're going to need to start off our Sanity client. Of course, we do need to import next sanity into our project as well so let's go ahead and do that in order for us to be able to essentially use create client and create image url builder so i'm going to go in here and just start a new tab and write npm i next sanity to uh, import that package the next thing we are going to have to do is get our project id which i showed you at the beginning of this video uh, and our data set. So we're going to get that from the studio um, and we're going to have to create a .env file in order so we can store them uh, secretly and then call them or get them using this. So we're going to be going into the env file and getting our next public sanity data set and our project id. Um, so I'm just going to create a file called .env for us. And let's get that and whack that in here. And let's also get that and whack that in here, like so. I'm just gonna save this file because um, this is looking good. We don't need to change anything here. So now I'm just going to gravitate actually back to our backend project. And this is what the sanity file is for. We need to get the project ID and the data set. So I'm just going to grab that here and put it in my front end. So in the .env, I'm just going to paste that in here and also get the data set too. So once again, let's get our project. And simply grab the data set and put it in here and save that. Great. Now let's go back to our index.js file. Now, I'm just going to actually, I mean, you can keep it like this, but I personally prefer just to use, um, functional expressions, and then export default home. Uh, you could have kept it, it's just a total, it's a preference thing, it's just how I prefer to keep my code. Uh, and now we actually have to import the Sanity client from our Sanity.js file. So import Sanity client, I can't spell today, client from, and then I'm gonna go back one and go into the sanity.js file. Great. 
So we've imported our Sanity GS, our Sanity client. Now let's actually get to using it in order so we can get our data, right? So we're gonna do it like this. We're going to uh, export const get server server side props equals async. Um, hopefully you guys are familiar with Next.js. If you are not, I uh, I mean, of course, you can carry along coding with me, um, but I do recommend that you look into Next.js in more detail uh, because um, that's just what we're using for this tutorial. So this is the, uh, I guess, syntax that you have to use in order to communicate with Sanity. Sanity has its own query language called GROQ or GROQ, uh, Graph Relation Object Queries. So that is exactly what we are using in order to communicate with our database and make queries to it. So our query, um, essentially we're gonna be looking for the type property. So that's what we're doing. And then we're gonna store. So we're gonna use the uh, sanity client, await sanity client to fetch, sanity client to fetch our data. So we're gonna fetch by passing through the query. We're gonna pass through that query we just made and save it as property. Um, or actually let's call this properties as there's multiple of them. Now I'm quickly just gonna write some code if there's property let proper t's if there's no properties by length so if there's nothing in there then uh return props properties just an empty array else return props properties And then of course, we're getting the server side props and we're gonna pass through the properties and I'm just gonna console log out the properties. And there we go. We have our two properties. Okay, so we've got them into our project. This is looking good. Let's carry on because we have a lot to get through, but we're getting the data. So we've managed to sync up our back end and get the data to appear in our front end. So this is fantastic. Okay, now let's actually get to showing the properties. Uh, let's actually first work on maybe the one property itself and then work on the homepage where it shows all the properties. So I'm gonna do that uh, by, first off, um, I think we should, okay, yeah, okay, fine. Let's, in the pages, I'm gonna create a folder called uh, property. And in the folder itself, I'm gonna make a file and then I'm gonna put slug JS. So like this, and this is essentially gonna represent the slug of each of our properties that we generated in the first part. Um, we're gonna to have to actually create a component for this. So export const property and then 
I'm going to have some props. And for now, I'm just going to return, um, well, let's just return an H1 tag that's going to have our property title, but let's just see if this works now. I'm just going to use the word title. Oops. Uh, export default property title. Okay, so the word title is showing up. That is looking good. Um, we don't need to export this twice. Okay, so we've got the title, the word title showing up, but now actually let's go about getting our server side props in order so we can use them uh, in our page. So I'm gonna have to use the client for this. We're gonna do it the exact same way that we did before. Um, I'm gonna write export const, and then we need to, once again, get server side props. It's gonna be an async function and then we're gonna to have to pass through the page context. I'm gonna show you what this does in a little bit. So, okay, so if you actually use the page context query slug, and I'm just gonna save this as const page slug for now. And I'm gonna console log it just so you can see that we are actually getting the page slug okay so page page slug so context query slug and then if i actually go to this page and refresh it and look in here i'm just going to ignore that for now because it doesn't really matter i just want to make sure that we are getting the slug and i am a lovely london flat so we're getting the slug that is looking good let's carry on now we need to actually, I'm going to delete this now because we don't need it. We need to actually write our query. So just like we did before. So this time I want to get the property based on the page slug. So I'm going to write const query and I'm going to use grok again. So this is the uh, query language that we are using in the tutorial. I'm going to use backticks because we are actually going to have to put in some variables in here. I'm going to open up our brackets, type equals property, okay, and slug current equals page slug. So that is uh, what our query is, if the type is property and the the current slug is the page slug. Uh, and then we also actually need to get the title, get the location, get the property type. So I could have just copy pasted from above. Property type, get the main image, get the images, get the price per night, get the beds, get the bedrooms, get the description, get the host, but we don't just want the host, okay? We want everything that comes along with the host, so this is how you would do that if something is referenced. Get the ID, get the name, so the arrow is basically for anything that is referenced. Get the slug and get the image for the host, and then, of course, we also need the reviews, and that is an array. Um, the reviews are made up of the traveler. So again, we need, this is referenced. So we need this syntax, and each traveler has an ID, also a name. Oops, I've used a dot there. Uh, a slug and an image, okay. Cool. So I think that is it. Now we need to use the sanity client again. So once again, I'm going to save whatever comes back as a property. I'm going to await. I'm going to use the sanity client client to fetch 
the query, but we also need to pass through the slug, the page slug, um, page slug like that. Okay. So, and one last thing again, if there is no property, oops, if there's no property, let's return uh, props, just an empty array, and then actually maybe null, props null, and then not found true. Um, else then I want to, oh, else, else I want to return the props, which are the title once again, oops, which is the property title, the location, which is the property location, so the property object's location, property type, which is the property object's property type. What else was that? Main image, which is once again the property object's main image, the images, which is property images. Um, price, there's a lot of stuff we have on here, so just bear with me. <laughs> then the property objects, price per night, the beds, property beds, bedrooms, I think we're nearly done, property bedrooms, description, property objects, description, uh, the host, so it's the property objects, host. And finally the reviews, so the property objects, reviews. Okay, I believe this is it. So now if I pass through a title and let's just replace this with title. There we go. We have our title showing up. Amazing. So we have done this. Let's get all the other props in so that we can work with them. So I'm just going to uh, destructure them up here. So once again, title, I'm just going to actually just copy this because I don't want to type them all out individually again, uh, description, and then we're just missing host and reviews. And I believe that is it that we need. Okay, now let's get to using this for our app. Uh, this next section is basically going to be me just styling things up and making things look good. So let's do it. And after that, we're going to actually use the Google uh, Maps API. Okay, so that we can visualize where the property is on a map. So, okay, so we have, um, I'm just going to get rid of this and then let's put this in a container. So I'm just going to put class name container. Uh, and now I'm going to put in the title. So like title like so. And then let's also make the title bold actually. So I'm just going to whack that in here. Um, yeah, let's just get everything in for now. So we've got our title in. The next thing I want to do is maybe use an H2 tag. Let's also make this bold. And in here, I just want to put the property type. So that's going to say if it's a flat or a house. Property type hosted by. And then if there is a host, 
uh, I want to get the name of the host. So just like that. Um, cool. Nice. Next, let's use an H4 tag. And I'm just going to put bedrooms. So the number of bedrooms. So that is a number, don't forget. So that's the number of bedrooms. So I'm just going to put the word bedroom. Uh, and then let's also put the beds, so the number of beds and beds, or bed. We're going to have to make this multiple um, because we obviously want to deal property type not defined, property type not defined. Cool. So obviously, because we have two bedrooms, we probably want that to be an S. So I'm just going to quickly make a utils uh, file in the root of my project, utils.js. Uh, and then I'm just going to write a quick helper function for us to essentially turn things uh, to have an S, to, like make things multiple by adding an S to the word. So I'm going to do so like this. Uh, export the const so we can use it. Const is multiple. S well cost is multiple, and then I'm going to pass through a value, and whatever value I pass through, we are going to essentially um, return. So we're going to get the value, and if the value deeply equals zero, uh, or the value is larger than one, so I'm going to actually put this in. Value, value than one. Um, if that is, is that true? Question mark. If it is, then please return an S. Otherwise, just return an empty string. Otherwise, just return an empty string. Okay, so if the value equals zero or is larger than one, return an S. Otherwise, return an empty string. Now let's import this into our slug. So import is multiple from the utils. Cool. Um, and I'm literally just going to do this. So bedroom, and then I'm just going to do is multiple, and then I'll pass through the value of bedrooms and do it again for beds, so is mul to pull and pass through the value of beds, because that is a number and whatever that number is, um, is going to return an S or not. So now both should come back with S's and they have. Great. Let's carry on. What else do we need in here? Well, Just going to do a little line so that we can carry on. Um, I know that, okay, let's actually just make it look a little bit more like the actual website itself. So I know that they have some text like this. So I'm just going to go enhanced clean. Here. This host is committed to Airbnb's five step enhanced cleaning process. Okay, so we've got one. I mean, this is just me just like being pedantic, I guess, trying to make it look exactly like the website, what else do we have? We have amenity, oh, I can't spell amenities, amenities for everyday living. Um, the host has equipped this place 
four long stairs, kitchen, shampoo, conditioner, hair dryer included. I mean, you could have, if you wanted to, you know, had an, an amenity section in your uh, content management system so then you can get this data up. If you didn't want it to be hard coded like I am doing now, that would actually make a lot of sense. So please do also consider that. And house rules, I think I'm just gonna, I think all of them have the same house rules. Maybe they don't, I'm not sure, but I'm obviously just gonna hard code this for this project. This place isn't suitable for pets and the host does not allow parties or smoking. So maybe it's not hard coded, but there we go. Okay. So this is looking good. We have some um, text. The next thing I want to do is perhaps add a price box. Uh, so I'm going to add a div. Let's actually just call it price box. Okay, after this, let's do some styling because at the moment I've just been putting in, you know, like words and stuff, but this is going to be the first thing that we've properly style. And in the price box, Let's just have a price per night. So here I'm going to put in my, um, so I've used the pound. However, please feel free to use whatever you want. I didn't really want to, you know, give it a uh, currency in the back end, but you can use dollars, uh, Polish złote, whatever you wish, okay? Um, now I've got the price per night. I also need to get a review in here. So let, actually let's just do the review amount. And once again, uh, let's use review. Uh, let's use is multiple again and then pass through the reviews. View amount like so. Um, and then let's just have a button here as well in the price box. Um, so let's style, I, I like to use divs because then you can really style up the button how you wish. Class name button. And let's just write that, okay, so we, the button is to change the dates and let's just write that if you click on the button, it'll just take you to the, um, to the main page. So on click, uh, oops, on click for now, I'm just gonna leave it empty and not do anything. Ah, stop, on click. Is it doing this to me? Why is it all red? Okay, there we go. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave that for now and then we'll decide what to do. I just wanna take it back to the main page, I think. Okay, so let's take a break here and style up the price button. Review amount is not defined. Ah, uh, yes, okay. Uh, const review amount is just going to be the reviews. The review arrays length. Um, we could have just put in the review its length in there, but I don't know, I didn't. Okay, so there's all our information. Of course, we have to start adding images and stuff, but let's just do a lot of styling first. So all of my styling, I'm just gonna put it all, all of it for the whole project in one page. Um, I think that should be fine. So I'm gonna go into the styles, CSS, Global CSS, sorry. I'm actually going to delete this because we don't need it. Um, so I'm just going to have the global CSS. Uh, shall we delete all of this? Yeah, let's go ahead and start. From, let's start fresh. Okay, so the first thing I actually want to do is um, for my HTML and my body, uh, let's just put padding zero. I like to keep padding and margin 
zero to start with, you know, just so we can really um, make everything uh, custom. Now I'm going to actually import a font uh, from Google Fonts because I don't really like these. So if you don't know how to do this, I'm going to show you how Google Fonts just simply go in here and I'm going to search for a font called Notto. Notto Sans uh, JP, this is the one I quite like. And I'm just gonna select all of these because I think that will quite nice. Um, do, 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 maybe, ah, no, go, let's go on. So I've just got all of them, I'm gonna import them. So I can use this in my project. I'm gonna put it at the top, like so. And now that just means that all I need to do really is get the font family. Okay. And now let's go into our project and ta-da, the new font has been applied. I think that's a lot more Air B and B ish. Okay, cool. So we've got our new font, um, that's going to be global. Now let's go ahead and do the, let's do the price box, shall we? Okay, so the price box, mm, let's just give it a width that is 35% uh, of its parent container and then height, so that's the container itself. The height, let's make it 250 pixels. And now, for now, I'm just gonna give it a border that is one pixel solid and um, RGB. This is a color that I picked out earlier. Cool. And a border radius, because I like border radiuses. Uh, let's give it a border radius of 12 pixels. And actually, let's give it a box shadow as well. Box. Let's make the box shadow RGB uh, over 12%. Um, Zero, six pixels. I actually inspected the Airbnb page and this is pretty much what I got nearly as was close enough to what um what I got for the price box. So there we go. We've already got a sort of like nice price box um showing up for us. Let's actually style the container it is in as well. Um, cool. Let's actually align everything center to align items center. Oh, we need to do display flex, don't we? So display flex, flex direction column. And I think that should be it. Okay, so that is now centered. Now let's do the container. So I'm just gonna do that above here. Container, uh, display, flex, flex direction, column. And now I'm gonna give it a margin maybe. So top 20 and to the sides 50. Top and bottom 20, that is. Okay, so we have a little padding around the container. So that is good. Um, that's really the only things that we have. Oh, we could do the button as well. So let's maybe do that. Let's make our button 90% of its parent. Give it a padding of 15 pixels a border radius of let's say 10 pixels, a color. Now I actually inspected the uh, Airbnb page for this. So this is the exact color they're gonna use. They're gonna use a gradient too. That is the color of the text. 
Uh, and then the gradient we're going to use is this. So we need background, not background color, but just background. And then linear gradient. We're going to have it 135 degrees. And then RGB, 255, 56, 92 at 20 percent and then RGB 189 30 89 so there we go there is our button so yes it is very similar to Airbnb yes I did inspect Airbnb's page for that button okay let's carry on Okay, so we have all of that. We have a price box. Let's go back up here. So we've got the title. Let's actually also put in just a smaller review amount because that's what the website has. So I'm just gonna put that in there like so. And then let's put in some images. So to put in the images, well, the main image is going to be easy. So I'm just going to make a div um, and perhaps maybe, actually, let's make an images section. So class name equals images section. And in here, let's actually, I'm going to create a uh, image component um, so let's do that uh, and then in here I'm going to have the a div that says it's going to have the sub images section. Cool. So I have that and now I'm going to map on once again I'm just going to make an image component and let's actually go make it fast why not okay so once again in the root of my project i'm just going to make components and in here i'm going to add image js const image equals and then don't know what I'm going to pass through yet, but I'm going to return a div with the class name. Now, I either want this to be a main image or an image. So I'm going to have an identifier that I'm going to pass through. I then identifier and if that identifier is a main image um, well then just keep main image otherwise oops otherwise it's just an image okay otherwise <laughs> it's just an image so that is what the class is going to class name is going to be uh, and then image is just going to be, well, the source of the image, which I'm going to leave, um, I'm going to leave just blank for now. Cool. So like I said, I'm going to have to pass through an identifier and the image itself. Um, okay, so I think that is fine for now. Just gonna save this file and then go back to the slug. So, like I said, we need to pass through two things: an identifier and an image for it to uh, attach to the image source. So the first one, well, we know that the identifier for the first one, we want that to be main image. Okay, um, and then the image we want to pass through is the main image from our data. Uh, and for the sub images, well, 
I'm going to have to map onto here. So the identifier for this is just going to be an image. And then let's actually map. So we're going to get our images from our data. And we're going to map. Um, and for each thing, I am actually going to want to have a, let's have a key and the image, oops. Okay, wrap that round. Our function. So, and I'm gonna pass through an image. Okay, so I'm getting the images that we have, that we have, Okay, so I'm getting the images that we have from our data and then I'm using map to map the image onto each one of my image components. Uh, so that should work. I'm literally going to pass through each of those images. So I'm just going to click save for now. It won't work because we still have quite a lot of things to do. Image is not defined and we also have an imported image into here. So import image from components, components, there we go, image. Now, we are going to have to use uh, a URL for from Sanity in order to essentially get our images to show up. So I'm going to pass through the image and I'm actually going to import so let's go ahead and do that. Import uh, URL for from Sanity. So if you don't remember, that is from here. That is the code that I gave you. And we're just using this. We are using create image URL builder uh, that we have imported from Next Sanity, and we have done some configuration and saved it as URL4. Now in my images.js, I've imported it, and I'm gonna use it right here. And what I'm gonna do is get our image that we have passed through, but wrap um, URL4 around it like so. Let's save. It's not complaining to me. All oh, right, oops. Um, I need to export it. Export default image. So there we go. We have now got our image. And of course you can do a bunch of stuff with this um, if I really, uh, there's a lot of like cool stuff you can do, like I could do auto format. Uh, yeah, like the um, Sani documentation will provide you with a bunch of stuff that is quite fun for you to do as well. So if you want to do that, go ahead and have a read more about this right here. So the create image URL builder. Okay, cool. So we've got our main image. Uh, now we just need to work on the little images too. So let's do that. Hmm, I don't know why our images, our small images aren't working. Let's have a look. Console log images and let's see console log main image. It's very strange. So those are images, each image has an asset, a key and a property type and this one just has the asset and type, it's because we gave it a key, we've mapped on a key, but this looks exactly the same as this, which is essentially what is giving us the image. Very strange. Very strange indeed. Okay, well, 
you know what? I'm going to come back to this. Um, let's, I'll read up on the documentation because that's really weird. I don't understand because all I'm doing is just passing on an image into this image component that I made and it should work the same as the main image. But for some reason it is not. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll go back to it. Um, what else can we do? Maybe let's do some styling. Let's style it up. So let's style up the images section, the main image and the sub images section. So images section images section I'm going to use display flex and I'm also going to use flex wrap which we don't need to do that I'm just going to do display flex and um, make the border radius of the whole section how will this look the same let's make it like around 10 pixels I think that should be fine and hide any overflow so overflow hidden so you can see we already have a, um, you can see now we have a little rounded edge and then these have moved over here. So now let's actually maybe do the sub section. So sub images section and just make sure that they also, once we have the images, that they are display flex but wrap over themselves so i'm going to do flex wrap wrap like that and also overflow hidden cool overflow hidden um do we want to start the main image yes main image Let's give it a width of 50 pixel, 50%, 50 sorry, so it's always 50% of the parent component and a height of 270 pixels and also overflow hidden, overflow hidden. Hmm, maybe that's a bit too small. Uh. Or we could just make it, let's make the image, um, yeah, maybe let's shrink it down a little bit. I think maybe that would be wise. So, any images in the image class, or even the main class, eh. main image because we don't know about the other ones yet so the image within that let's give it a width of a hundred percent cool so that looks better i'm just making sure that we can see the whole image based on its width okay mm, i think i'm now ready to carry on obviously it's a bit annoying about these but we'll fix those later now what else do we want to do we obviously have all our information. I am actually, perhaps, let's actually make a div that is a section so we can start making this look even more like the Airbnb website section. And then in it first, I'm gonna have a div with the class of information for the first half of our section, which has all the writing that we did. So there we go. And I'm just literally going to, I think, take all of this and put it in here. And then of course, make sure it's formatted correctly for readability. So one more, there we go. So there we go. And now we have a section which has information. Um, perhaps style those up too so I'll do those up here we've got a container we also have a reusable section and we have a class of M4 
information to. Margin, 20 pixels. Uh, let's have zero. So 20 pixels on the top, then I want zero on everywhere else. And then I also want display flex. But, uh, oh yeah, and justify content uh, space between. So that's what all our sections are going to be like. And then the information. Well, I'm just going to give it a width of 60 pixels because uh, we have the information box that I want to appear to appear on the right. Great. So now I think I need to move my price box so it's in the section but not in the information section. Okay, cool. So this is looking a lot better and of course more and more like our Airbnb site should. Okay. So I feel like we're done with the top part. Now um, let's just make another line here. And right under that, let's actually start with, um, I'm gonna put the description. So the description of the uh, property itself followed by a, another break or line uh, and then, because it is literally a line, not a break really, sorry. And then under that, um, once again, I'm gonna have an H2 tag because that's what the website looks like. And I'm just gonna use my review amount again. They like their review amounts review amount, review, and then is multiple and pass through the review amount like so. Now, um, if review amount exists uh, or is larger than zero, an actual fact, and, well actually no, just if it exists, then we want to show the following. Uh, then we want to essentially get our reviews and map. So similarly like the images, we're going to map our review onto each review component that we are about to make. So there we go. We're going to map it out like so. So for each review, so we're getting the reviews array, we're then uh, gonna get a individual review and we're gonna get the review component that we are of course yet to make. Why is this not liking that? Okay. Um, and then to each review component, well, let's actually pass through the review itself's uh, key. And the actual review. Cool. So now let's go into components and make a review.js component. So similarly to uh, the image const review equals no props to pass in for now and then just return uh, something. So let's just put a div there for now and let's not forget to export default review. Now, how do I want my review to look? Well, I know that I need to pass through the review itself. Um, and then what do I want to return? Well, let's actually make this a class name review box. So that's something I'm gonna style up. And in my review box, I want to add, let's put an h1 tag. 
the review rating. Uh, let's put another H2 tag and the traveler who did it. So reviews traveler. Let's attach to the review and then an image. So I'm going to put an image of the uh, traveler. So let's close that off. And the image I want to put through. We're going to have to use uh, URL4 again. So let's get the review traveler image because I know the traveler has one. And I'm going to use URL4 to wrap around the review traveler image. So I think that's it. What else can we have from the review? I'm going to console log review just so we can see. Yes, I know review is not defined. That's because we have not imported it at the top. So I'm just going to import that import review from review. URL four is not defined. Uh, so let's do that. We need to import it, don't we? So we need to import it from sanity or sanity file. Import URL four from. Uh, let's find. Uh, oops, we went back too far. Sanity. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Let's do some more debugging. So we are passing through our review. But we're obviously not passing through something correctly here. Okay, so let's go back here. Let's just try console logging the review itself. Okay, so we are getting the review. We're getting the review rating. So let's put that back in. Oops. So there's a one review that says five stars. Let's also perhaps try the review traveler. Hmm, the review traveler does not work. Okay. Review traveler. So that's it. Review traveler name. Okay, that's why. Because we can't actually have an object, can we? So review traveler name. I thought I remembered everything correctly, but I did not. So we've got our rating. We've got our name. Omar Abdullah has given us a rating. Now let's get his image. And then we have his image. Of course, it is really big, but if you remember what I told you, we can actually format the image directly from here. So I could do something like width 50, um, height 50, uh, crop focal point. Let's see if that has worked. So that's a lot better, as you can see. Um, nice. Uh, of course, feel free to, you know, like make it look however you wish. But I think for now, I am fine with that image just there. So this is looking good. We are getting our ratings. We are getting all our information. What else is there? There, let's have a look. Okay, and the last thing we are actually going to do is, so once again, I'm just gonna put that on one line. Let's make a line, because the last thing we should do is show the location of our property on a map. So I'm just going to give it a title, location. 
and for this part I'm actually going to need to create a map okay so we will do that in a bit or actually should we do that now okay let's do that now so for this I am gonna have to use a Google API key Google Maps API key so for those of you who don't know where to get one from Google Maps API this is where I got mine from. You need to sign on to the Google Maps platform, get the Maps JavaScript API, and then you are essentially provided with a bunch of documentation. Um, I'm obviously not going to go into this in too much because this should probably be like a separate tutorial of its own. But however, um, I'll just quickly show you how to get your API very quick. Lee. So you would go into here, um, that is the URL, uh, and then you would essentially create an API key. There is a bunch of other stuff, but as long as you get here, you should be fine. It will then take you to a credentials page. You might need to do a bit of signing up, but once you have that, you should get to this which will give you credentials and you can create a new project. I, of course, have already created a new project. So this is my project for uh, using Sanity and I have my API key right here. So I would simply copy that API key and then in a .env file, I'm gonna put Google Places API like so. And I am just going to paste my Google's Places API. So that is really it. Uh, once again, this is what the page looks like. Um, and this is how I got to get the token. It's on the Google Maps platform. So make sure to get to this page. Um, and once you do have that, well, it is quite good because there's a lot of um, code for us. So for example, I would simply react map Google map API. Okay, so this is what we need. I literally just Googled it and got my answer. So I'm just gonna take this it really isn't very complicated. Just go to the React Google Maps API package and I am going to take all of this like so. Um, and then in my components, I'm going to create a map.js file and simply paste all that code. It really is that easy. Once again, this is the package that you need. React Google Maps API. So I've pasted all of that in here. Of course, you need your API key here. So we go process env dot Google Maps API key because that is what we saved it as in here. Oh no, we didn't. Google Places API. It's a good thing that I checked. Okay, great. So I believe this is all we really need. Let's have a closer look. So we have the container style, we have the center. I'm actually gonna move this into the uh, component itself. So I'm just gonna put it um, perhaps down here. I'm also gonna rename this, so let's make, make this const map equals just to keep everything consistent and of course export default and rename this to map2. Click save. Now I'm actually going to want to pass through the location that we have from our data and the location if you remember had a latitude and a longitude. So instead of having a hard-coded latitude and longitude I'm going to use my location latitude and I'm going to use my location longitude it's just just like that okay and 
And I think that should be it. Okay, so let's click save. So we've got our map. Now I'm going to import map from map. And then let's use the map under location. And of course, let's pass through the location. Click save. Ah, right, we didn't import the package. Whoops, that is my fault. So let's start a new tab. Make sure it's the tab of the front end, NPMI, and then just import that package so we can use it. Okay. Now I'm just gonna restart this. And scroll down. Oops. Now, because we are using it in dev mode, it can be a bit temperamental. If you want to give in your payment details, I think that should clear it up. But um, let's just see if this is working. So we're passing through our location. Let's see the map. Okay, so let's just console log, good old console log, console log, location, latitude, um, and then let's actually put something here so we know what we are looking at. So we are getting it, ah, there we go. So we are getting our location. So as you can see, uh, a lovely flat situated in the heart of Battersea and that's where it's taking us. It is taking us to Battersea. So we've done it. We have successfully uh, got our map working. We can of course change the uh, container style. That is totally up to us. For example, I might wanna put 100 pixel, 100% width, and I think that looks a little bit better. I can, of course, also put a little mark. I can, of course, also put a little marker where I want um, my location to be. All I would have to do for that is essentially uh, add a marker. So instead of this here, I would use marker, and then. The marker, actually, I don't need a closing one because it's self-closing. And then I would just pass through a uh, position because marker is actually also from here, right? So I need to get it from there. It's already like pre-made pre for us and pre-decided that it takes a position that needs a... latitude and we're going to give it location latitude and longitude and of course we're going to give it location longitude um, and then we can of course give it an icon too uh, i'm just going to give it like the standard icon that came with um the documentation from uh, Google Maps, Google Spaces, Google Places API, so image and the image is going to be const image equals, oops, image. And then I'm going to make sure that the anchor has Google new Google Maps point. So once again, I'm literally just getting this from the documentation 558. So if we go back here and we look at markers, so add a marker to your map, that's basically all I've done. I've used these instructions 
um, to do so, essentially. So once again, I'm literally just using the documentation and I'm just going to use, this is what I've used essentially, um, and I'm just going to use this URL as the image. So let's copy that so that our marker can have a cool little flag like that. So of course you can personalize this, it is totally up to you, but if I put a little beach flag, then I should get a little, once again, I don't know why. Um, like I said, it is temperamental because um, I'm using it in developer mode, I believe. As you can see, it says for development purposes only, but I find that somehow if you just, I'm just gonna console log this, then that seems to work for development purposes. I can't see the map the little marker though. Why is that? Ah, and there we go. We now have a little marker that is a beach flag on our property. Cool. Okay, I'm loving what this is looking like. Um, I do want to go back to the images, but uh, like I said, I'm going to have to do some research on that. So let's move on to the main page first, and then I'll go back and tackle this. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, we wanted to also link this back to the um, home page. So perhaps let's do that. Uh, I'm just going to, so maybe we don't have to use a on click. Maybe we can just link it. Next link. So we can just use a next link. Uh, I think I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to import that here, import link from next link. So instead of uh, having it on click, I could just wrap my um, div, my button div in that link tag. Uh, and make the edge ref go to the home page, and that should um, that should work. So let's have a look. And great, that takes us to the home page. So now let's do the home page, right? Okay, let's do it. So I just need to go back to this page right here. So at the moment we're not returning anything. Let's change that. Okay. So in here, I guess if properties do exist, well, then we want to essentially show a feed, right? So this is what we want to show. If they do exist, we want to, uh, let's create a div with the class name of main. Okay, and this is going to have a, it'll have our feed in it. So class name, let's call it a feed container. Okay, and in our feed container, um, before we do any mapping, because I want to map all the properties in here, let's just put places uh, to stay near you. Uh, a div with the class name of feed. Properties, map. So this is where we're gonna do some mapping and once again, so I'm gonna get the uh, property itself and its index and uh, for each property. Well, let's actually create another div. So I'm going to map onto this uh, and then once again, I'm actually going to use the link tag, I think, but let's just have a think about what's going to go in here. So I've got my div. Uh, uh, let's actually, let's just keep it simple. 
going to give us a class name of card for now uh, and the key of property ID. Okay, so we're going to map each property to this um, little card essentially. So we've got our opening div. And then inside each of these, I'm going to get an image, oops, tag. So again, it's self-closing. And for each of these images, well, it needs a image. And for this, I'm simply going to get the property. So property main image. And of course, we need to use the uh, URL for um, like so, so we need to import that to uh, URL4 because it's in the same place as the Sanity client. So let's see how that looks. So amazing, we are getting the properties. That is looking good. Maybe let's do some styling before we carry on. So we need to style the card, the feed, the feed container and the main. So let's do that here, uh, main. feed container, the feed itself, and the card. Okay, so I'm just going to give it some like rough styling really for now. Let's make the main, well it's going to have to have both the feed and the maps. So I'm going to put display flex uh, in there and flex direction row because I want them to appear next to each other, side by side. Um, now let's have a look at the feed container. Well, the feed container, uh, I want it to be width 100%. Uh, and take up the whole height of the uh, window, so like so. Um, I'm going to give it a background color that's slightly darker than white. So I'm going to use F8, F8, F8. And it's giving padding 20 pixels because everyone likes a bit of padding in their containers. Now the feed itself, I'm just going to put display flex, uh, flex wrap, wrap. So the, anything that goes into the feed wraps over each other. And then finally, the card itself. Uh, each card is just going to have a padding of 10 pixels. So we've got the feed and on the other side, we want to have the maps. So I'm just going to put, well, the map with all our markers. So map. Once again, let's start that next to the feed maybe. Also give it a width 50% and the feed container to width 50% too, so that they are 50-50. And now let's make these card images a bit smaller. So perhaps make sure that the uh, uh, any image in the card, so card image um, is max width, I don't know, 100 pixels maybe a bit too small, 200 pixels. Okay, so that's immediately looking like a lot better. Uh, it would just mean that they sort of wrap over each other, I guess. We can even make them 250 pixels. It is, it's really up to you. I'm also gonna give them a border radius of 20 pixels. Cool. So we've got our little places to stay next to us. We can even display uh, more information about them too. So let's go ahead and do that. So I guess we don't need the index anymore. Um, we do, however, want to link the card. So I'm going to just put a link that we're going to import once again from uh, next link. And then 
we actually need to put the reference of the um, href of the image of the property uh, slug. So I'm just going to do this. property forward slash and then we're going to use the property slug current um, okay that should work let's check it out link is not defined it's because we did not import it import link how do we do it here Okay, so now if we click on one, it will take us directly to the correct page and we can go back to. Cool, so we've done that. Uh, let's actually also maybe show some more information. So here is the card itself. Um, let's also add a P tag that perhaps shows the uh, reviews because we love reviews so I'm gonna get the property I'm gonna get its review uh, views sorry and their length um, so I'm just gonna go that and then review and once again is multiple and pass through whatever this is so if that number is multiple we'll get an s view um, let's also perhaps put in a, the property title so property title like so and then the price per night why not so again let's make that an h3 tag and go property price per night cool so now when we look here amazing this is looking a heck of a lot better uh, and then let's just put per night it's like so awesome i mean i'm Really happy with this. I think this is looking really, really cool. Okay. Perhaps we don't even need that in bold, but hey, whatever. It is absolutely fine. So we've got our place to stay near you. Now, finally, let's actually get all the locations of these places. Actually, no, let's make a header first. Sure, why not? Let's actually make a header. Um, So for this, I'm going to just create a navbar, oops, navbar.js. Now, uh, the navbar is something to be constant navbar like so. And I want the navbar to, well, it's going to have the logo for one. So I'm just going to have a div uh, class name. And the div, so another div, div with the class name of logo this time. Okay, and of course we need to export default nav navbar. Okay, now what do we want to do with this navbar? Hmm. in the underscore app.js file. Now, again, I'm just gonna change this to const my app equals, just to keep everything consistent. And here in the return, instead of just returning this component like so, I actually want to return the component uh, with all the page props, but with a navbar above it. 
meaning that the nav bar will be on every page that we have, no matter what. So I'm just going to import that nav bar up here and it means that it will be on our property page or our main page, uh, just whichever really. So that's going to be quite cool. I'm going to import nav bar from my components nav bar. Uh, and that is really it. Obviously, we haven't really styled it up, so maybe let's style it up before we have a look at what this looks like. So let's put it at the top, actually. Nav. And then, of course, we also need our logo. So our nav is going to have a position um, sticky because we want it to be at the top the whole time. Um, I'm also going to give it a Z index so it's always at the uh, forefront of 100. Let's also give it some box shadow. So RGB, uh, same as last time, so 12%. Um, zero, six pixels, 16 pixels. So I think that should be okay. Oops. And a padding of 30 pixels. And then our logo. Um, I'm actually going to use a background image for this. So background image and I'm going to actually import a image so let's create a, another folder here called images and I'm just going to use a logo that I have pre-made and put it into my images like so and now this means that I can go into my images and get the Airbnb logo. Um, I'm also going to just make sure that it's the right size. So let's just say like uh, 130 pixels and then a height of 40 pixels. Okay, let's have a look. Hmm. So that's not looking great. What is happening here? A background size, maybe we need to give it. Okay. So that is looking better. And you'll see if I click on any of these that our uh, logo is still up there because the nav bar is still up there. The box shadowing hasn't been box shadow, sorry, hasn't been applied to our nav bar. Why is that? Ah, we've got one zero extra there that we don't need. Hmm. Still, so nav. All oh, right, dot nav because it was a class of nav. So now we have. Okay, this is looking really good. The last thing you want to do is actually um, the cluster maps. So in the index.js, once again, I'm actually going to have to uh, create another component because we're going to have to have multiple markers. So we can't just re reuse this one, sadly. Let's call this dashboard map.js. Uh, and I am going to copy all of this actually into my dashboard. However, we're going to have to map out markers for however many properties we pass in essentially. So just to make it less confusing, I'm going to rename this. We could have kept this the way it is, uh, but I think just for readability, let's rename dashboard map here and dashboard map here. Cool. So this time we're not passing through a location. We're going to pass through properties. So multiple properties. Okay. Uh, and that means that the, how are we going to do this? 
So we no longer really need this. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that. Now, we need to map on to the marker. So for each, uh, so I'm going to go get the properties and I am going to map. So let's make sure to do that at the end. I'm going to map um, each property and its index. So we probably don't even need index, but that means that for each position, well, if there is a property uh, and its location exists, we want to get the latitude. And then the same for the longitude. So just stick that in front of there. We don't need that. So we're going to map onto each one, each of the properties, uh, latitudes and longitudes. Okay, so now let's have a look at what this look. Ah, oh, right, we didn't import the dash map dashboard. So once again, let's go here. Here is the map. And then I'm simply going to put the dashboard map. And then we need to pass through the properties. Like so, properties. And then we need to import it, ah, which is already done for us. Thank you very much. So now let's have a look at what this looks like. Center is not defined. Ah, uh, yes, because we don't have a center anymore. Does it need a center? Um, yes, it does. But we need to get the average of all these properties, which is uh, because we can't really do that, but luckily they're all in London. We can't do it easily, we could, but for now, I'm just gonna use my center as the first locations, uh, latitude and longitude, okay? So property, properties, we're gonna go into the first one and get its location. Uh, latitude and we're going to go into the first one again and get its location longitude. So now we have a center. Huh. Why is it there? I don't want it there. Height, let's also make this 100 VH. Amazing. So we've done it. We have mapped on two of those properties. Like I said, the center is actually the uh, first property's location. If you really wanted to get an average of the longitude and latitudes of each one, you'd uh, have to do that math in that component. I'm not going to do it here, but if you do want to do it, you need to do exactly that get the uh, average point of all of your properties, uh, longitudes, and then the latitudes. So this is looking really cool. I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. Why is that appearing there? I don't want it appearing there though. Let's fix that. I want it here. Um, Let's just see what our map is doing. Let's just give it a background color of uh, red for now. Okay, so it's there. Why? Why are you there? Let's try and move it out one. See if that helps. No. Ah, okay, yes. And now I guess main will just do let's find main. Oh, that's why I didn't okay. 
Ah, oh my God, I've been coding for too long. So now I can get rid of this red. Um, let's go back here. I'm just gonna console log something. So uh, it works, console log. Let's just do this and then have a look here. And there we go. How good is this? We are getting our properties. If we add a new property in our content management system, it will show up here and the little flag for it will show up on the right, so the little marker. And then if we click in here, we get the actual flat or property. So this is amazing. We have now finished our Airbnb clone. Um, I'm going to finish this image problem now for sure, but thank you so much for coding with me. I've really enjoyed this. This has been a long one, but hopefully you do have a very uh, well-rounded app complete with content management system, complete with a Google Maps API. I'm going to put all the links to everything that we discussed in the description below. Uh, as well as where to get your Google Maps API, uh, where to uh, get the sanity information, and just in general, where to find my finished code, which I'm going to tidy up to. But for now, let's get to fi fixing this image problem. Okay, so what I would do is just this. I would simply change this a little bit around here. Um, I'm not sure why this wasn't working, but this should be the best solution. If you do ever get stuck, by the way, Sanity does have a Discord channel that I'm aware of. And the one time that I did ask something, everyone was quite responsive. Um, so that was good. Uh, so please feel free to use that. Um, I don't have the link, but I'm sure you can find it on Sanity.io or I could actually find it and put it in the description below too. So remind me if it is not there. But yes, yeah, so this is how we would fix that. And ta-da! Okay, so we are now officially completed. Thanks so much again for watching. Please do share your finished products. Uh, I'm going to clean this code up a little bit. So while it's, it will mostly be the same, if I have maybe like changed some styling or something, uh, then don't freak out. I'll most likely just be changing the styling. I do want to keep this project as similar or exactly the same as this tutorial has been. So once again, here's my finished product. I hope you uh, have enjoyed this tutorial. Please do give me a thumbs up and a sub if you did. And I will see you again for another tutorial soon.